not getting all right hounds take it a game at a time you're still away. in this come on and finally the change is made the adapting. hounds won't let it happen three times in a row no one plays against adapting store well, that door didn't do anything bro usually because they're best of threes usually because it's a 2-0 set and they're uh, and they're done for by that point now the hounds are a resilient team they have not faced much adversity throughout right. the year here in the uh, sec gonna have to do so now Bobby Yaga gets banned away, and then an Agni first pick for Crimson. That is a pick slash ban against Angry. Angry has been falling back under the Bobby Yaga or the Agni throughout this weekend. Uh, and so I think a, a good start here for the Ultra Chowns. But an Amaterasu first lock in. I wonder if you're still getting something for adapting immediately. The answer is no. Amaterasu plus Ishtar, though, Miff. Certainly a strong start for the Ravens, regardless of there not being a Thor. No, the Ishtar, I think, should generate a whole lot of pressure. And considering Vaporish Coast has been the problem in the early game, every single game this set could be a, a god player combo that becomes nearly as synonymous as the adapting Thor. No, I can't say that. I, I'll, I'll never say that again. But I, I'm, I'm you go, swept up. You go wash out your mouth. I've, I, you, I should. You <laughs> Repent. Well, Mike, uh, that's our, our stage manager. I'm going to need some soap on standby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he gave me the thumbs up. We'll get that rectified, I promise, if Mike you, If you ever dare. If you ever dare. But for now, you're safe. We'll, uh, we'll give you one pass on this. Cernanos for the Hounds. Ymir for the Ravens. It looked fantastic. There were so many freezes. Ymir, 100% win wave. Two that slowed down the aggression of the Hounds. Whether they were running into a literal Ymir wall or... Initiating and then being double frozen, it felt like uh, just great synergy there with, with Cozy and, and Ymir. And so I like the run back here from the Highland Ravens. I do like getting Ducky on something aggressive, though, again here, Myth, because we, we've seen the Sun Wukong Ducky. We've seen the Hercules Ducky. The Hercules Ducky was able to make uh, a few plays here, and I do think a shining light in what otherwise was a, a tough game there in game number two. Some jungle bands will roll through, though. Oath will take the Susano and the Naja. Fenrir, that has been a fallback for adapting. Yeah, but he's got plenty of fallbacks, right? Ratatask. Now he's banning. TM at Fenrir. A similar play style to the Thor. Sure, you're lacking the wall, but your initiation gets a little bit better. That knockup, incredibly strong. The follow-up stun from a range as well. So the Ravens, I think, can just wait out on, on adapting's pick. He's very capable of playing just about anything in that assassin tab. The Hounds, on the other hand, I think have really got themselves a great composition with the top three. You've got second best aggression in the Hunter role. I'm curious what he's going to pick. Just leading that charge. Hercules has served Ducky incredibly well. We got that direct lane matchup in the previous game. And Ducky looks real good. Uh, a couple of solo kills. Massive rotations that Hercules stifling in some of these team fights. And then the Agni hasn't been one of the primary go-tos for Crimson. But the one time we'd seen it this week. Looks incredibly strong on it, and as you said, does act as a tertiary ban towards Angry on the other side. Oh, man, Mercury so locked mm. in for the king. He's got a lot of experience. He brings it up playing against Johnny throughout the regular season. That's, That's right. one of his favorites. He's uh, got a pretty keen eye, a, a, a first look at how Mercury should look. I expect a, a slow pace from adapting, which generally is his MO, likes to farm up, wants to control that team fight phase. So where are you going to look elsewhere? Where's the pressure going to originate? It's got to be the dual lane for the Ravens. If you want to make sure that the Hounds have to respect you on map, aren't just allowed to have Ducky try and play that hyper-aggressive style with the dives of Oath on the right-hand side, play through your duo, Ishtar and Ymir, yep. I think they could do it. I mean, if there are a couple absolute win slash, slash loss rates at, at battle here, Merlin played four times, has not one yet this weekend which is wild to me merlin feels like just such a, a solid mage pick merlin yet to win nemesis has only won we've only seen wins uh from them i don't so know senpai out more on either side i haven't played against him in a long now, time you, you start to take in the context of this match now for the outro chat i think the hounds like win the, bro but i thought the hounds would win last game too based won, on draft but they just into moded I don't know if you've ever faced a reverse sweep like where you were down. Yeah, I don't know. Two. I've never. Depends how uh, if the Merc gets off to a good start or not. If Merc <laughs> doesn't do anything, down. let me tell you, my mental. What was, yeah, what was your mental? Doesn't get a um, I, any kind I of lead, the, then uh, the Hound should win this easy. Of, hey, things aren't going well, so I'm gonna get really quiet mm. and, and and start sulking. 
Uh, and because I was primary shot callers for my team. Does that, that extend also was just bad. to life? Or yeah. is that just a smite thing for you? Yeah, I mean, it's not really a therapy session right now, but when I am sad, Nef. I okay. keep it to myself. Why do you think that is? <laughs> <laughs> ask me about smite, bud. How about I will ask you about smite. Uh, do you think the Eldritch Towns have a full five here that are able to turn things around? Uh, <laughs> man. Compositionally, uh, uh, is it, does it make it's, sense? It's a strong composition. I think you've got great points of the game that you can play through. I think it's really contingent on the dual lane. DMB's just got to hold it down, let Ducky do his work in the solo. Eldra Towns, they got to win three straight. One of them starting right here, right now. J Mac and Trelly, how are you feeling and why? I'm feeling pretty good myself. Trelly, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. We're feeling good over here on the cast. We hope that the Eldra Towns are feeling as good as we are. I like Trelly's shoes. Game because they're going to need all that and more if they want to take down the Highland Ravens, who are up 2 0 in the best of five. One game away for the EU team to make it with their EU brothers in Hex Mambo, to have a full EU SCC sweep going over into the Smite World Championships. So the other towns have got to stop it here, not just once, not just twice, but three games in a row, Charlie. We have seen crazier things, but I'm thinking the Highland Ravens, want, they're, they're feeling confident trying to put a stop to that right here. I think the drafts are even. Great picks to do so. Kha'Zix back on the Ymir. Can we pick our opponents after the second set? Ishtar and Kana back on the Hamaturasu. All things that I think could be driving forces here in game number three. I wouldn't be surprised if the duo lane of the Ravens try to get out to a very early start, as per usual with Ymir and Ishtar. You're going to have a pretty easy time. But luckily, Quig actually starts the two this time around. Does not have to waste the hog. And is just able to pick up Kha'Zix. That shit is so funny, bro. <laughs> minis either. That's a great play. It will make your clear a little bit worse, but at the very least, oh, he might still have to hog if Kha'Zix actually goes in for the ice carpet. No, it's a pick up. I'm actually a little surprised that Quig didn't throw Kha'Zix at Dude Man, bro, and, and put a little bit more pressure on the Ymir early on, but I guess just wanted to get to lane as quick as possible and maybe avoid some of the fighting, but unfortunate for them, Coast has already hit level two on the East Shard. We saw what Kosa was able to do with a level two lead earlier on in the set, but not in quite the same position to do so. At least not on these first couple of waves. But Kosa and Kosa, with their pressure they got, with that early lead, will be able to establish at least a nice start for themselves over on the left side. Looks like beads from all the carries at the moment. I was I was thinking maybe a blink from Oath, but respecting too much. Oh. What Adapting's able to do on this Mercury. Feared maybe the ultimate later on, and especially if you're looking towards Duo. Not going to be able to find too much aggression if you're getting Ymir frozen. So I think a smart call there. Still has a, a great late game time, and if you're using that shield effectively, you will be able to outbox the Mercury. But Oath wow, has to use the beads there. Was a little bit worried. The damage coming through from Angry and Adapting. I'm a big fan of the level 5 Agni, but pre-level 5. I mean, you, you can't buy clear with this character. The flame wave, you have to step up into the Merlin clear, give yourself susceptible to being pulled in by special delivery. You really need to get some some levels before you're safe to walk up to lane. You have more XP from Fighter the first blood, but camps. that's like such a risk. Brewing, but angry and adapting. Able to grab the larger of those harpies. It's a minion wave size. On the right side of the map, a pull. On the Kha'Zix, maybe not the best. Yo, what's up with Quig today, man? Quig straight up griefing today. Down, only a couple of health potions left. Look at all the, look at all the archers that Kana's got to deal with. Just for the pressure that Ducky has put up. He's straight up costing his team today. On his side of the map all the way up until now. Kana should be able to clear those no problem. Thanks to the rotation from adapting, able to pick up his blue buff in no contest as well. I'm thinking the purple buff could be under some fire here. Kha'Zix has the interceptor. And Quig was looking a little bit worse for wear HP-wise, so that is going to be the immediate call. However, Quig has the hog, has to use it effectively here, does not want to get stunned as the damage comes through, and the Highland Ravens realize they don't want to waste too much time here without eyes on Erupt Crimson. So they're just going to go for the minis invade and back up. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking Kha'Zix still steps up, though. Just What's he doing wrong? What do you mean? He's like almost dying every five seconds. Will Quig use it or try to hold this Ymir around until Oath shows up? Kha'Zix, rooted in place, picked up by Quig, thrown against the wall, surrounded by three, but the Mez from Coast buys him a little bit of time, a little bit of distance, a sprint pops through, but the slow is still there from, oh, turnaround freeze by Kha'Zix, and the support in a 1v3 scenario with the backup of his support, of his carry, 
able to make it out alive. Yeah, I mean, Coast was doing so much of Dude Man, bro. He had to respect the DPS and walk away. The Heavenly is a clutch pickup. So good against Nim. This kid is playing lights out. I mean, Coast has been playing fantastic throughout the entirety of this tournament. This time is too. It still slows afterwards, so it's not really that bad. Taunts. He's going to let out some laughs. Going to try to get in your head. That's usually what Dude Man Bro likes to do. But he has not gotten the opportunity to. Not a single time this set. Because Vaporish Coast has been on point. And for my money's worth, Charlie, uh, a, a quiet Dude Man Bro is uh, maybe a, a, a low mental team for the Elder Challenge. Because he's usually one of the most vocal players on the team in game and out of game. And the fact that we're seeing him so quiet in this one. It's not a great look. Adapting with the Sonic Boom finds Ducky. Ultimate is available for Ducky, but he's not even going to get a chance to use it. He gets caught out of the driving strike. This game is over already, I think, guys. What are you doing so far up the wall? Catches him out. And causes guys, I think this game might be over. Shit. For the Highland Ravens, he just Good luck at Worlds, man. I mean, Ducky knew the ult was coming. He tried his best to juke it out. Couldn't quite immune it with that excavate. But Kana on point with the Dazzling Offensive. Predicted the driving strike down to the T, 180'd. It was able to find that stun. Gohan, thank you. First kill, and then, to your point, I've got no clue. These guys forcing plays, so man. They're forcing plays in dueling lane so hard, bro. Especially when he was level 4. I mean, maybe he was about to hit 5, and that's why he wanted to look for that aggression. Does not matter. Coast. They're mentally, they're mentally distraught, forcing things, not playing calm. Level 5 get the kill as well. And then Shamir... Looking real nice with that extra kill. Now that Kana's had a game to play against this Hercules, understands what it takes to fight up against. Even changed up the build. Didn't go for the Golden Blade this time. Did Kana. Picked up that round shield instead. Maybe towards the Berserkers. A little bit earlier on. Gives him some better defense and a little bit of extra boxing potential in that regard. Is that angry going to Worlds Revenge? No. They can't get a visa from Romania. Similar. To game number one start for Vaporish Coast on the left side. Maybe not the first blood, but still a first kill in that lane. Certainly is. And that means Oath's job just became a lot more difficult. Y you can't really look towards left. Dude Membro's not going to be able to poke out Vaporish Coast for quite some time. The beads are down. But as long as that ultimate's there, it's just so difficult to Can actually... Can you find a sub him? No. He's just going to play with ping like he's doing right, now. Ducky. He's already dead once. He's not going to be able to find too much pressure on Akana. The teleport is available for Akana, whereas Ducky does not have it. So this Amaterasu is going to be a lot more confident, being able to take some more poke and then back up and get a second health bar and teleport back in. So his only job now is to say, hey, is Kha'Zix out of position? Maybe I can ult him, but he's got sprint. All of the hounds are in a rough spot here. They just need to find as much farm as possible and make sure you're warding up in case Adapting comes sending it down a lane. Kha'Zix doesn't find a freeze on anybody. Slowed down, but will be just fine even in the 2v1 situation. Find some time for Angry to show back up and clear out his wave. Level 8 for the mid laners. Quig. Thought maybe he would go steal Bro, how can you even compare a layer situation with Angry? I guess Kidding Dude me? Man Bro thought that that was going to connect. He really thought that was going to connect. He, he was banking on that Bramble Blast. This is even a conversation. Comes up bankrupt instead, loses the ultimate with it, and now there's not a fear in the world for Coast on this left side. If you want some extra enjoyment in this game, whenever a play like that happens, look at Coast player cam because he absolutely pops off, yells, uh, just everything you can imagine when you're feeling this confident. Kha'Zix might be looking for a good wall here, but not going to be the play. Full on retreat as it oh, looks like a successful got that. blue buff invade. Ducky gets Kana back, but. No follow-up from Oath. That ultimate is down. A possible ultimate here to try and chase down, but Oath already calls it off. That's going to be a success. Everything's going wrong for the Hounds. For nothing. Probably fearing adapting, ulting in from downtown. And he was there, able to. Didn't look like he really thought that Kana needed help, and he did. Bro, someone puts Coast in his place in? This dude's fighting in the loser's bracket. What do you mean? He's already lost. He just plays with confidence. It's just his, uh, how he is. Frozen. It tries to go for the pull, but they force Coast styles on him. Oath around the backside, though. Drops the ult on top of Coast. Coast still holding on to the beads this entire time. Adapting goes into the fight, but Oath with a quick shield will heal up the damage that Adapting had done to him. And it's an evened out trade on the left side. Only the sprint popped by Kha'Zix for the meditation out of Quig. 
And that was some good engage, but you gotta watch out for that wall from Kha'Zix still. It seems like Oath and Quig really want to go for that Interceptor. And they will be able to confirm it for Quig in this case. And that's gonna be all. Uh, pushing up to... They already got the Ama ahead. Uh, the Herc is a good matchup into the Ama, but the Ama's already ahead, so it's kind of just like that lane is done. It's still a bit early, especially when Yusha doesn't have a crit online. That's when you really get access. And that Ama can shit on the Herc now. But I'm thinking Crimson might have to make a rotation. It's not enough to send Oath over to the duo lane as we just saw. They need more damage if they're going to be able to get off to a better start here. These fights have not been going in favor of the Elder Towns and the Ravens. Haven't been able to find too many successful ganks, but never in danger of dying either. They're, they're stepping so far forward with no fear of being punished. Can we also just talk about the the level of confidence that Vaporish Coast had and, and the, the calm and collectness he had in that entire engagement on the left side? Not only squares off against Doom Man Bro, throws the, the ultimate at him just for some extra. Sees that Quig is coming over, just casually walks away, and then Quig tries to go for a pull with that gravity well. And what does Vaporous Coast do instead of beadsing or trying to walk away? He dashed at him with the jolt to get the backflip style to go away so he doesn't lose on beads. He doesn't risk being pulled back. And he doesn't even beads Oats ultimate whenever he gets hit by that too. Doesn't use his- but Apparently weapon. Lighthouse has non-stop cheaters. Insane play from Vaporous Coast in this third game. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he knows his damage numbers well. And unfortunately for Oath, he knows his build is not very good right now. Golden Blade into Tier 2 Mace. Yeah, for the boss. There's so many like cheaters. You, you need more damage. I was watching That's Landmark last back. night. Oh yeah. my god, he had like clear, good movement speed. so and many obvious cheaters in his lobby. It was You're crazy. How much damage is gonna they, need to do, they need to do a band wave. On, for sure. You know, Coast has to panic. Maybe dash away. Maybe go back for his team. But in this situation... You're saying, okay, you've got some slows, but you have no actual damage built up just yet. I've got my eyes on adapting, though. He hasn't quite finished that rage. When he does, we'll love to get some stacks online, send out those sonic booms, possibly looking over towards that duo lane or even... They the usually, they'll probably do a band wave soon. They usually do a band so wave far, quite a little bit into the wipe. That item, so he hasn't sent one out besides that gank over to Ducky early on. In the Time about Tarkov. Fight around Oracle Harpies. Crimson wants to try and steal these away, but... Will not do so. It's the Highland Ravens who come up big. Now have vision around the Gold Fury pit to spot out. Potential rotations from Oath. <laughs> Angry actually just like back taunted Crimson who missed not only the, the, the flame wave stun but the bomb after. Angry just double backed for the, for the fun of it just to essentially taunt the man without actually pulling off a taunt. Yeah, I mean, when you know you're out of range, you know The Hounds look so desperate in their plays though. This is rough. At the moment. I still think if he makes the rotation over anywhere, he's going to let Angry get ahead. But your team needs a leg up in this race so far. Has not been able to find much. Pyromancer is being started up, though. So far, it doesn't look like the Ravens are keen to this. Kana is just checking blue buffs. So yeah, this should be a free objective here. Nice. Good the play. Kha'Zix sees a giant gamma ray burst in the sky and realizes what's going on. He will not. So the Pyromancer goes down. Dude, man, bro, despite going Executioner to Vaporish Coast crit, was able to get the better of that boxing trade for a bit, but immediately is going to hear that the Highland Ravens are pulling this Fury, but he's surrounded by three, almost four if Adapting shows up. Yeah, Kha'Zix shows up, and that will deter two man, bro. Wall is there. The Ravens get the Gold Fury off the immediate answer of the Pyromancer. And now, Charlie, we're looking at about a 2,000-plus gold lead for the Highland Ravens off the back of two kills earlier on. Yeah, that's just a good acceleration now. Nah. Merc wants a, as Not close to 100% crit as in possible. Fact, well, double ult Oath. Adapting even uses his own, gets the dash and nowhere for Oath to go. His beads are down, his dash is gone, and so is the rest of his health. And look at Adapting, he's Rage slumming all the a, way. Russia Coast thing is getting now? loud yet again. <laughs> This Highland Ravens team is playing with full momentum. Merc has always gotten rage. Getting off to a 2-0 game start is going to put your confidence at an all-time high, right? The, the, the Hounds know they need to Damn, show Damn, dude, they're mentally just shattered, man. So far, and it doesn't seem like the Ravens have any interest in taking it easy. Like I said, every single time Coast is making a good play, he's popping off. His team's getting loud, as they should. They've got a dominant performance here so far. That gold lead continues to climb with zero answers from the Elder Towns. That Fury and the Pyromancer down, at least for now, they can breathe a sigh of relief. They know that no more aggression should come their way for the time being. They can look to just get their neutral farm wherever possible. And to their own credit, 
A 7,000 gold lead last game was thrown. <laughs> it was not enough. However, it was the Elder Towns doing the throwing. Maybe you're hoping the Ravens can make a play like that, but they haven't made too many mistakes this set so far. And you know, that's Somewhere. not even the worst lead that we've seen thrown so far this tournament, Charlie. We had an 11K earlier on in the week as well, so never count a team out just yet. All it takes is a couple of small misplays, one too many deaths in a team fight that may have not even needed to happen. Or maybe just a pick onto Quig to keep things going. Quig actually helps turn around, adapting too far forward. The boulder from Ducky is good, but they oh. push Coast has shown up. Oh, look how they low they all are. This time. That is exactly what might be needed to get this thing going. Ducky up against Coast, but it's oh. a stun from Coast on the pullback from the swords. And Two Man Bro, level 12, stands up and stands tall with the rest of his team. Yeah, that's a big play there from the Hounds. What seemed to be a free pick on a Quig, surely transforms into an easy pick on to adapting. Some low health bars, but nothing confirmed. And the Elder Towns are finally on the board. That kill going over to Erupt Crimson, honestly, he's been farming well. He's the only member of his team that was relatively even. So probably a good call to give the kill over to him. Oath actually finds a level lead all the while while adapting was in the grayscale. So this nemesis is gonna get a, a faster track on the late game where she can actually do some damage and doesn't have to fear for her life around every corner when the beads are down. But it still looks like Coast should be careful. He's got no relics available. And it looks like actually dashes in a Doom Man, bro. But he's trading back so much damage. He is, but unfortunate for Coast, there are three people there. That's a good play by the That's Hounds there. For Vaporous Coast, he will go There's down. There's no active. This game, one, one, and one now is the carry for the Ravens, and the other towns are finding their avenues. They're they're finding a couple. Yeah, of that's that was that big. Left open All right. By the Highland Ravens, and they're sneaking their way back into this game. As we're sitting at about a 2,500 gold lead up now, only for the Highland Ravens, who was looking much more dire just earlier on. Ducky has stopped. Has got his backstop three times now. I'm curious how long this will go. Just because he, he wants to get, what well, I'm assuming, a shield of regrowth online as soon as possible, but Khan is not going to let that happen. Is actually walking towards back camps. So I was wondering if speed buff was on the mind of the Ama, but not the case. Just going to proxy some waves. Level 16 already before 16 minutes. That's the benefit of how much speed you can really build up as an Amaterasu with Golden Blade. You just farm waves and continue to push your lead. I would say fighting anywhere near Kana, probably a good idea here for the Ravens. 17 to 15, a one level lead for both the carries of the Highland Ravens as well. It's been a quiet game in the KDA at least for Angry, sitting at goose eggs across the board for himself. The only person actually in the map who doesn't have any form of active point into anything from kills or assists. But definitely not been shirking in damage so far. Now we'll throw a little bit. Aegis burned from the dive of Oath. Sonic Boom from adapting. Doesn't land on the Oath, but at least scares Oath away. Freeze gets the beads from Oath this time around. And the pick up by Quig will only slow down the engage. That's a spectator Ravens. bug. Gonna Oath be late. Rotating over from left lane could be making for a play towards Pyro. I mean, if I'm Oath, I'm never trying to take that 1v1 under tower. You gotta respect the stance switch. And as you said, Coast already makes it in. Steal opportunities abound. Crimson does have good damage. And Quig drops the ultimate. But Ducky, he's in the back against five. And up against the fire giant. Sheesh. It is Kana to shut down the solo lane once more of the Eldritch Hounds. Crimson has already dashed. All it'll take is a little bit of CC to lock him out. But good stun. From the mid laner has slowed this one down. Kotz get pulled back in. Freeze onto Crimson. Beads now gone from the mid laner. And Oath tries to go in to save the day. But Whoa. another wall from Kha'Zix sets up for adapting. And the rest of the Ravens to knock down Oath. But Two Man Pro turns it around, gets a kill on his lane opponent. Adapting will walk in and needs a couple of extra punches oh. to take down DMB. He'll do so, but trade down. This is fine. fine. This is good for the Hounds, bro. Be able to find I'll take that. So I'll take that if I'm the Hounds. From both of these teams, the one not off the mark. Just I'll take that if I'm the Hounds. Dash away from angry, and it looks like that's gonna be all. When you're like ahead, so listen. When you're ahead, you don't want to take trades like these. In favor of the Highland Ravens, but that was essentially everything used. That fight should have been a lot cleaner in favor of the Ravens. I think the Hounds did a great job of finding picks where they can, and now they've got. Well, people will play charting. That is something She's too short. Fight towards for sure. The issue is that 2-0 Agni is behind the 1-0 Merlin. And still, Ducky was in the back line versus 5. And it's now two levels behind Kana. 
I mean, wasn't even able to get the blue buff with the excavate. That really hurts. What did Kata even take it with? Like, did he just, did the stun break just in time from the turn and auto to take that one away? Did the mirror shield go off that I didn't notice and steal it that way? Whatever it may be, this is a completely different Kana from what we saw in game number two, where at this point, Kana was the one who was down two, three levels, was sitting at 0-3. All it takes is one game to dial in how, how Ducky and the Hounds play. And Kana's been able to now start with a 2-0 and 2 for this Amaterasu. Yep, Oni Fury has spawned back in, and with that, the Pyromancer is also in play. That's gonna be looked at and immediately done here with some great crits from adapting. Four stacks on the Rage immediately into a Wind Demon. You don't want to meet this Mercury in the jungle, but the Eldritch Hounds realize they've got some time to maybe go for the Oni Fury themselves. They're going to head that way, but Khan and Adapting, they're not going to let that one slide. They're also rotating over to left. I think it's still Raven's time to be aggressive, but that's not what Quig heard. He's going to walk in, look for a pull, and eat a good bit of damage from Angry. That Merlin does not mess around. And we could pull in. Can you do anything here? Good damage onto this. Jeez. Oh, God. But cost them a lot to do so. Ducky, Oath, Quig, and Dude Man Bro, all four of their ultimates used. And I've got to imagine at least one or two bombs. Hey, Torless, thank you so much for the resub. Not a lot. Fire. For this Oni Fury, have the Highland Ravens. Everyone's Ravens playing, uh, these Ravens playing so loose, time. bro, like they already won. So just be a single pick <sighs> and a Fury. These teams the like to, count. like Tyler to lose, Ravens man, now. I don't understand starting to rotate over but it's too little too late you, you, the window of opportunity is now closed. so weird yeah, i think adapting made the call hey let's go for fire they walked up saw ducky and they're like or the wave like maybe we could just go for the that wave instead good. of course the rest of his team was not there angry Kha'zix and coast were still on the way but with the amount of crit that adapting has you have to imagine that fire giant would have burned down very quickly and that's why the hounds made that rotation over as quick as they could so only fury goes down Good opportunity there for the Hounds to continue closing up this gold lead. And now Quig has rose up to 2-0 and as well. I mean, he is going to continue to climb. And finally, some pressure towards the shells. That's what we were worried about in game number one. Kha'Zix has been on point with these walls. So many times the Hounds have made good plays, got walled off, got stuck out. This time around, Crimson and Quig picked up the shells. Hoping those are both phantom shells. Not only the, the 2 0 3 for Quig. <sighs> Not only beads or shell pressure that's had to be put in Kha'Zix, but where did this three-level lead come from that Quig had? All the, I looked down, and normally at this point in the game, you're seeing supports more in line with their Kha'Zix is. Level 13, 14, getting ready for Fire Giant. Maybe you got three items in the build. Maybe you're only two with full upgraded starter. Quig's level 17. Quig's been a, a, a farming Freddy, you know? He's just been going for all the farm that he can find. Look at the XP per minute difference, 140 between the supports. That is wild. Yeah, I mean, the two kills and the three assists help, but I think he's just been grouped over this team a little bit more. And now the Highland Raven still... Here we go, here we go, big team fight. Crit. This fire giant will burn, but you gotta watch out for the burst damage, and look how quickly it's going down! It is absolutely wow. melted. The Highland Ravens get the fire. But how many can get out of the fight? Kana finds a triple stun in the back line. Oath tried to get things going and excavate off the mark by Ducky. Bomb stun hits Kana. It's a charge in, but a triple freeze from Cossacks in a wall. The so oh, off. shit. A massive gravity whale grabs a couple of players. They don't have enough damage. Angry who strikes first. Doom Man Bro down. Oh Ducky my God. finds a pull. Agni had no more bombs. To adapting a fully stacked range for the Mercury. Quig walled off. And a bomb only on a Vaporous Coast. Can Crimson, can Quig make it out? No, it's another first. Oh, but shit. Quig playing so Quig. well, but no this team. Atlas, despite how the team fight went, Quig pulled up massive this fight. He pulled up massive, but how do you pull... I mean, Agni had no cooldowns. ...to an Atlas pull and not get anything off it. Unfortunately, all the cooldowns were down and adapting. Comes in from behind with a clutch ultimate. Dude, Man Bro and Ducky still dead for quite some time. And it looks like that tier 2 tower over on right is where the Highland Ravens look next. They got worlds on the mind, and they want to make sure they get as much gold as they can. But here come the Hounds. King Aqua, thank you. Trying to see if they can pick thank up any scraps from that last engagement. Thank you very much. And they're not going to be able to find anything. Relic Graveyard on both teams. You got one or two available for each side, but that's about it. 
And the Highland Ravens, despite some fumbles from their earlier lead, are going to make it out with Fire Giant. They're going to make it out with one more tower to go through. Only a single Tier 2 tower left for the Elder Towns to defend. Quig playing lights out on the Atlas still hasn't been enough for this team to turn it around. The Highland Ravens with a 7,000 gold lead. A complete different spot than where they were last game. They were down 7K. Turned it around and made it a 2-0 for themselves. Now it's the Elder Towns oh. on the back foot. Can oh. Oh, his back stopped <laughs> by the wall out of Kha'Zix. He could have just ran. And instead, he'll go down. Ducky and Dude Man on the right side push out a tier one tower. But That's rough. They're going to need a full defense from the Hounds to stop the onslaught of the Ravens. Point's still good without its stacks yet. For an extra moment. I mean, Oath was afraid of the wall, but I, I guess that was the smarter call in his head. Go for the back inside the fog, but Kha'Zix was not letting that one go. This left side bird is the target of the Highland Ravens, and if this siege goes bad, that Titan might be their next target. Well, Phoenix down to a third. Bomb hits a couple. Ducky stun, and the Gamma Ray burst hits a few. Minions have shown up, and Coast will walk back in and leisurely take this Phoenix down to low HP, but it's not down just yet. Reform Angry has stable ping. It's just a uh, bit on the high side. Up. Boulder, not going to find anyone this time. Angry actually gets a burst proc of healing from that soul gem. Left bird down, the Highland Ravens back up. That's going to be it for the Siege, and probably that's going to be it for the Fire Giant. I mean, you grab Gold Fury here, but it falls off in 55 seconds. You're not looking to do any more pushing. Ducky doesn't have the upgraded teleport just yet, so someone is going to have to commit their body to clearing out these left side fire minions. Doesn't they seem to affect him from what I've seen. To upgrade that teleport and then join these fights over for the fire giant next time, but it's not going to be enhanced. They've got plenty of time before that happens. I'm thinking it's almost time for the Elder Towns to, to group up in the jungle and make a miracle play because the, the actual even team fights have not been going too well. You still have Crimson and Quig going undying. So He's not going to be able to go there. Available. There are some, some shining rays of hope here. He's going to play the from his home country. It, the gold lead just keeps climbing. I do believe. The has got fully stacked Rage, Wind Demon, and the Serrated Edge. A lot of DPS. Yeah, he can't get a visa. Coast has been playing lights out the, the entirety of this set. Very You're going to get a sub? Six. No, I don't think so. I'm sure he's one and two, but seven assists and top of the damage charts by a wide margin. And it's actually the Ravens grouping up in the jungle, making a miracle play. Crimson should spot this out and tell the team, hey, we got to defend Phoenix, guys. Get over here. Well, Crimson's going to be the first one there. We'll find a stun on only adapting. He'll dash away. The Highland Ravens, they'll pull off of the Phoenix this time around as the full rotation from the Elder Towns have made their way in. Oath tried to wrap around the back, but was met by a ah, gap so the force of the Ravens. They're not leaving. A lot of minions pushed up on the left side of the map. The Hounds have a little bit of extra time, but the Ravens are going to force ooh, them ooh, to close. waste all that time and effort. Luckily, that wall misses. You don't have to lose the Phantom Shell before the Fire Giant Siege even begins. And it looks like all members of the Hounds are heading towards fire. They're not, they're not worried about the fire minions. They need to find a fight now. No, it's supposed to be... It looks like the Highland Ravens will give it to them. They're sieging forward. They very close to zero. It'll fight. never be zero. You still have to connect to the oh, land server. There from Crimson. They're, they're All they're the land is is that the server's right next to you. But you still have to connect to it and then get receive information back. There's always going to be a delay or a ping. On the side of the Eldritch Hounds, but it's going to be as minimal as possible. And the Ravens can back away. Is this a window now for the Hounds to take the fire? Are they going to try and keep... Forcing this fight, another bomb stun misses by Crimson, and they are just losing so much time on the Hounds by trying to waste around this fire giant. The Ravens we'll probably got like 20 ping. To push in. They're not going to go in yet until they have to. The, the Hounds need to force fire or a fight, and it looks like Kana is going to give them the pick they want, but, but no one can finish it. The Coast again steps up for the team, finds a triple stun from the ultimate, and this is yeah, it's like around call. 20. Sometimes I've the had Hounds less than that. To base, but now the Ravens. Don't want that one to happen. Ducky is going to get caught out. Crit after crit. Wall, wall after wall. The Highland Ravens will shut down the solo of the Eldritch Hounds. Ducky on the grayscale for 50 seconds. Kana gets dazzling offensive soon, and that fire giant is getting melted. The Eldritch Hounds need to retreat. They can't defend anymore. Up, so I'm good. 
to go back to base, and that will be the play. But can Kana chase down a Rep Crimson? Remember, Dazzling Offensive is available. That's not going to be the play. You don't have Ducky for another 35 Actually, when I used to, when I used to play Ravens. from New York, I had 20 ping by the left to rank bird, they when I played ranked. Phoenix. The Hounds came into this event undefeated God. against the SCC. The Highland Ravens, the God. second seed of Europe, and the Highland Ravens will be joining Hex Mambo, their EU yeah, I get 50 brethren, now. and a shot at the Smite World Championship. We are taking not just two yeah, Maryland, SCC New York. squads to World Australia. We got, we, we got like European SCC as the Highland Ravens. 3-0, the Hounds shut down their undefeated and go to the Smite World Championship. Let's go! Let's pop off from Coast and adapting there. Absolutely. 3-0 here. As it's well-deserved. 3-0.